Hi, I'm Bob in Osterhout. I'm going to talk to you about anger. Anger is, is uh, a misunderstood emotion. It's part of our nature, uh, but it's actually destructive. It, it works against relationships. It works against solving problems. It's very rare that there are long-term solutions to problems when someone is in a state of anger. Uh, it, it doesn't result from anger. It results from listening and cooperating and understanding. And anger actually blocks all of those things. Um, if you look at what anger is in nature, uh, and the higher level animals, of course, have many of the same emotions we do, uh, fear and anger, of course, among them. But the function of anger is to push away. And the amount of anger will match the degree of threat. Anger ultimately is a response to a threat. So a dog, dog growls and we back off. Uh, if the dog growls, um, if we're messing with the dog's food and, and he's not very hungry, he might growl a little bit. Uh, if we're taking away a mother's pup, uh, and uh, she doesn't want him taken away, then he might growl a lot, or she might growl a lot. Uh, so it depends on the nature of the threat. Uh, now humans get angry in all kinds of situations. Uh, that's because uh, in humans, anger is a secondary emotion. It, when there's not a direct physical threat, um, then the anger comes from the build up, a buildup of tension. Uh, if there is no threat, there is no anger. There may be other emotions uh, that, that arise, and we deal with those much more effectively than anger. But anger tends to be destructive in just about every circumstance. I, I frequently advise couples, uh, don't listen to what each other say when, they're an when you're angry, and don't say anything when you're angry, because nothing ever gets solved through anger. As I said, things get solved through understanding and listening and cooperation, and anger is the opposite of those because it pushes away. And so the more you know someone, the more effectively uh, you can push them away. And so people who've be get, been together for a long time know their, each other's buttons and anger then can escalate as each is pushing the other away. So don't say anything when you're angry. Don't listen to what the other says when they're angry. It doesn't really come from the heart. It comes from the anger and that function is to push away in that moment, okay? Uh, so I talked about anger resulting from tension if there is not a direct threat. Uh, a good way to, to think of this is, is a spring. If I had a big spring, let's say it's a big spring, this, this big around and this, this big, and I take this hand away, the spring will drop, okay? I can pick it up, if I'm real quick I can catch it, but I can pick it up and it's up to me what to do with the spring. I can put it over here, I can do whatever I choose with it. I'm in control of the spring, okay? But if I start to compress that spring, okay, and the spring is this big and I bring it to this size, and then I take this hand away, I have no choices at all. That spring has momentum and it's just taken off wherever it's going to go. Uh, and that's what happens with anger. Uh, the more tension there is, the less control we have and the more destructive it tends to be. So the solution to dealing with anger is in two parts. Uh, the first part is to get rid of the tension. Okay, and, and we've been talking about that on a lot of the videotapes, so I particularly suggest that you uh, review diaphragmatic breathing and grounding and practice those on a regular basis. And I've worked with people who have problems with anger in a wide range of situations, including uh, uh, in mental institutions. We call them residential facilities, of course. Uh, but I worked at a unit where we, they sent everyone who had problems with anger. There were 700 people at the facility and uh, we had a unit of 26 men and all of them that were sent there because they had problems with anger. So the rest of the units didn't have problems, we had them all. And as the tension levels reduced, the problems reduced. We actually had an 80% decrease in disruptive behavior when we were able to help the residents to focus away from the things that were making them angry and to be able to get the tension levels down uh, so that they were more relaxed and at ease. And I simply run around on a regular basis and, and uh, help people to uh, resolve any tension that was building up and they became aware of how to do that themselves and things became uh, much simpler. Uh, another related topic here is how to deal with someone when they're angry. Um, when someone is pushing us away, there's a tendency to see that as a threat, and if we have any tension, we're likely to respond with anger, which is the worst thing to do, okay? Actually, calm is stronger than anger. Uh, I've seen this in countless situations and, and dealt with a lot of people in violent uh, situations where they're able to calm down. Uh, one in particular, uh, when I was working at the residential facility, uh, there was a, a man quite large. He was six foot four, probably weighed 240 pounds, uh, who was at the school, which was on the grounds. 
Uh, the school uh, accepted students up till age 26, and the school called and said, you need to come and get Billy because uh, he's creating a lot of trouble. Uh, so I walked over there, and when I went to the, to the room, uh, there were nine people trying to hold him down. Okay, he was he was bouncing around. He was actually worked his way under a table. Someone was trying to grab his head. Someone was trying to grab his legs. Nobody was able to control him, and he was kind of keeping them all away. And I did the grounding and the diaphragmatic breathing. I spent a few minutes before I walked in the door preparing so that I had no tension myself. Uh, and of course, I had worked with him before. And I simply walked in and said, uh, "Okay, let him go. I'll take care of it." And they said, "You're crazy." I said, "No, I've worked with him. I, I know him." Uh, he'll be fine. And so they all jumped up and ran out the door, and all I did was say, come on, Billy, let's go. Um, and he made a sound. He didn't have any language, but he made a sound that he would make when he was happy. It was badoop. Okay, and he made his badoop sound and took my hand, and we walked out. And it was sim as simple as that. And, and I've worked in a wide range of situations with, with people who are out of control, and, and if you simply remain calm and understand what they're feeling and what their perspective is and join with that perspective, that's stronger than the anger. The anger is a temporary reaction that's burning up a lot of energy, and the calm is sustaining and goes through time. Okay, So anytime someone starts to become angry, whether it's yourself or anyone else, the thing to do is to bend your knees, take some slow diaphragmatic breaths, and let go of the tension. And practicing that over time, you take the tension off the spring, and now you choose. Okay, You decide what to do. Uh, the second part of anger is, is dealing with the other emotions. And the most common emotions that will trigger anger are hurt, fear, uh, frustration, and embarrassment will also get people angry too. Okay, there's other emotions, but those are the primary ones. Um, and if you take them and clarify them, simply accept that these are normal emotions, they're a response to how we're looking at a situation, uh, and look at how can we deal with them effectively. Um, uh, I'll start with fear because that's the most common. Uh, fear is always easier to deal with when it's clarified. If we know exactly what the level of risk is, uh, what the time frame is, what our options are, uh, then we're focused and the fear doesn't disable us. Uh, we can feed the fear with our thoughts by saying, oh my God, what's going to happen? Basically asking questions that we don't answer. But if we answer the questions, okay, well, what if that happens? What's my best choice? And, and work through it, um, then that diminishes the fear and helps to keep us focused and, and deal with it. Uh, frustration is another common trigger to anger. A little thing can set someone off uh, in a big way, and I've seen that happen many, many times, too many times. Uh, frustrations are always linked with expectations. So the key, that anytime you're frustrated, we ex it's because you expected one thing to happen and something else happened. Um, and so you can back up and look at what those expectations are. Uh, bottom line is if our expectations were realistic, we would never be frustrated. Now, we can't predict the future and always be realistic, but we can be open to different possibilities and, and we can be clear about um, what our options are and, and look at the larger picture because remember, tension always narrows your focus. And so if you look at the larger picture, uh, speaking personally, I you know, get frustrated uh, or did uh, with uh, a lot of computer programs. One in particular, I won't mention the company, uh, but uh, it, it wasn't intuitive and they always kept changing it and I couldn't find things. Um, but when I stopped and took a couple of breaths and, and realized, reminded myself, hey, this is a lot better than a typewriter, uh, then I was actually able to find things more easily. So the frustration uh, uh, interferes with our ability to solve the problems. Um, Hurt is a natural emotion, and that's going to happen in life. That, that's part of us learning how to get along together, and, and we're going to stumble, and people will make choices that hurt us, and, and we'll feel hurt when there are losses, and loss is part of life. Uh, and if we accept that and recognize that and, and don't dwell on it and don't try to defend ourselves against it, but recognize that it's, it's a normal but temporary feeling, and, and, and we will pass through that. Um, then that has no chance of leading to anger either. And embarrassment is, is simply a, another thing to clarify. Most times when people get stuck with embarrassment, uh, what's happening is they're getting embarrassed about being embarrassed. 
And uh, if you simply uh, are in a situation where you've become embarrassed, just be embarrassed. And it passes. If you don't dwell on it, it passes. But the, the problem is, is, is if you do something uh, that you think is stupid, and then you think about how stupid it is, and then, then you realize that everyone is looking at you, and you think of everyone looking at you about how stupid you are, and you know, then you, <laughs> you, get, you really make a mess out of things. Um, but if you simply accept, OK, here I'm embarrassed, uh, it passes, because the nature of emotions is that they're temporary. Okay? So in summary, uh, the real key to anger is to get rid of the tension, because tension drives anger uh, in the absence of a threat. The function of anger is to push away, so it never works in relationships. It always undermines relationships. It never creates a, a lasting solution to a problem. Uh, it's a natural emotion, but it comes from another emotion in the absence of a direct threat. And if you deal with those emotions in a healthy way, uh, anger will not be a problem for you. Good luck.